Welcome back to Great Mondays Radio. It's Josh Levine. I've been thinking a lot about some of the troubles that uh, Boeing Airline has been going through, and I wanted to just record some thoughts and share with you a little bit about what it's making me realize about culture, short and long term thinking. So most of you probably, if you've been paying attention, um, know that uh, Boeing Airline has been uh, pilloried in the press and for a lot of mechanical failures and the door that fell off on a flight um, recently, along with some internal fires and landing gear mishaps, are just a few of the examples of some of the lack of quality and problems. Uh, and most of these kind of they pale in comparison to some of the crashes that occurred uh, in um, uh, 2018 and 2019. There were two uh, catastrophic crashes on Boeing aircrafts. And that uh, is really the, the, the narrative of the story here is that Boeing at once upon a time was an incredibly reliable um, manufacturer of all things aerospace. And they were known in the world as kind of the benchmark for doing really, really great work. And that was what I would call a culture of um, uh, safety, a culture of hard work, a culture of doing things right. In uh, 1996, they merged with uh, McDonnell Douglas, which did not have a great safety record. But more importantly, what occur started to occur with a series of transitions to from CEO to CEO uh, then was a shift in emphasis uh, away from this quality and towards efficiency, let's call it euphemistically, product um, is no longer kind of the, the primary goal a great product it's now about uh economic gain and they made a bunch of decisions and choices that really focused on shareholder value as opposed to um the product itself and i would argue that as sh that's shortcutting what really drives a great business if you move from thinking about how to create a great product to how to make money, then you're missing the point entirely. And you're going to see a trade-off of um, long-term value for short-term gains. And that was, that's what leads me to this talk about this concept of culture being a long-term value generator. A lot of people that I talk to, a lot of leaders and executives agree that culture is really, really important. And that's something that, you know, no one's saying that it's not. But the problem is that there are so many other short-term problems or fires or issues that they need to address. And that culture is ends up being put to the back burner and it's kind of a nice to have. Now, if you have an organization like Boeing that has, you know, a, what I would call inertia, um, long product cycles, great track record, you know, plenty of customers, a long, they, they have a long lead time on their orders, plenty, a lot, a lot of orders, then you're not going to see the effect of that, those choices until many years down the road. In fact, uh, almost 15 years for Boeing, where it really, where it really came to light some of the challenges, but internally we saw some of those. There are reports about um, staff and engineers inside of Boeing that described a culture that was taking shortcuts. And in fact, one of the more more kind of symbolic or emblematic choice, uh, uh, emblematic campaigns um, that described or sort of brought to light the shift in focus was this idea of share value. Uh, share value was a campaign that they initiated in the late 90s, making sure that 
every employee or person that worked on the on the planes was aware of the stock price. And that was the end result of everything. And that's how everybody was rewarded was by that stock price. Now, this to me feels like the sort of the, um, I don't know, canary in the coal mine moment where there's a lot of large organizations that now are obsessed with stock price. And what I keep coming back to is that Profit is just proof of doing great work. And in my book, I put, I describe a system or a cycle that starts with an investment in, uh, in employees to make sure that they create a great product that then drives that value that can in public companies be share prices, but it can be products sold. And that system is, it is, easy to shortcut and hard to get right but what you will what you what the story i think is revealing here is very much about that consequence of not thinking about this in the right way and getting to a place where it's not i mean Look, the the airlines crashing and killing thousands, a thousand people on each of those flights and doors falling off. I mean, that's terrible. But their choices, stock buybacks uh, and share driving um, or focusing only on profitability isn't illegal. It's fine. It's part of what capitalism is. But legal is a very low bar. And what we want to think about is creating a an organization that creates long-term value success over years not quarters and it is very very easy to be seduced by the short-term thinking because that money for the next quarter to get that stock price up you get that immediate like almost social media style dopamine hit of saying hey if we for example, cut our staff, we're going to have, we're going to save a ton of money and we're going to be much more profitable. This happened uh, when I, in the early 2000s, I had the opportunity to work with HP and a new CEO came in and his job, he saw it as, and the board, you know, hired him because his vision was to cut expense. And he cut all of the, he cut a ton of staff. And you know what? For a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, maybe his whole term, that stock price went up because they became so much more profitable. But at the end of the day, that um, HP, I think, is a cautionary tale because they're essentially being unwound and not curry, not where are they? I mean, they're still a business. There's a, still a couple of different businesses that were kind of spun out. But to me, that idea of, it's it's the opposite of what what businesses should be doing is actually creating value for the world for their customers not for shareholders and that this whole this whole mess is because the focus was exclusively and only on short term gains get that stock price up and I, I do think there's a lot of um, benefit to, and I think there's a lot of, it, it, there's a lot that's good about um, stocks, stock indices, um, sh having, you know, shareholders going public. There's a lot of benefit there. But the problem is that we get lured into that one indicator, that one number as the thing that we should be moving. And the truth is, is that is just a symptom of doing good business. That's what it's supposed to be. But as humans, we want to find shortcuts. And culture, there's no shortcut for culture. It's hard work. It's something that needs to be built into the business. It's not something that we can just 
launch a new set of values and say, ha, we're done. See, we're great. It's an investment. And it's an investment in a, a long vision. It's a, an investment in a business that's going to continue to be good for customers, be good for employees, be good for even, even the shareholders in the long term. Thinking about culture as a long-term value generator is a tough argument to make. It's really hard to think about how do I benefit in the future because there's so much, there's so much, there's so many problems immediately. There's always going to be a fire in business. There's so many things that can go wrong. And there's even things that we can do immediately to benefit the business. But I would argue that if you're not paying attention to culture every day, Sooner or later, there's going to be a catastrophe. There's going to be a problem that emerges because you were not paying attention to it. And so if a long-term benefit is not a motivator, then maybe the short-term avoidance of pain could be. Culture is how we help employees do better work, create more value for the business, improve not just their lives, but the business's bottom lines. That's why we need to invest in culture, not because it's good just for employees or it's a nice thing to do. It's because it generates value in the short, but increasingly more and more in the long term.